How's it going YouTube? AS Jets coming at you with a pretty special video. As you can see here, if you're subscribed to my main channel, I am currently at my replica of, or what's supposed to be my replica of Chicago Hare International Airport Terminal 5. As you may or may not know, I am currently, as you can see, in the process of completely giving the airport diorama a total makeover. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of document the process of how I go about doing this. Uh, I used to do, I, I did this sort of thing back in like 2020 where I made a couple of videos about how I step by step built a couple of my model airports, uh, Lahore and St. Thomas, I believe both of them. I made videos on those back in 2020. Uh, they were pretty fun to make. So um, this won't be as in, maybe it will, I don't know, but it won't be as detailed. I don't anticipate it to be as detailed as those videos, but definitely in this video, you're going to see basically how I take whatever I have here and transform it into the new T5 for my main channel, AS Aviation. So uh, let's get started. Let me give you all a brief overview. Uh, so we got a bunch of slate gray foam boards here. I got about 10, I, I had exactly 10 of them actually. So we got them all sorted out here, laid out here how I want it to be. Um, and we're just gonna go over how we lay all the foils down, how I get the terminal oriented, um, there are some issues with the boards themselves. That's going to be the first issue that we address in this video. So, yeah, a lot of stuff to get through. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I do hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to get done in this entire sort of overhaul project is that I'm going to fix up all of these sort of poster boards that uh, are kind of warped. You, you, you probably can't tell, but um, some of them are actually like curving upwards a little bit. I, don't, I can't kind of display with my hands, but let's, uh, let me actually show, oh, this is a good example right here. You can see how it's kind of coming up like that. It starts out good, like flat, and then it kind of curves up like this. Um, see how it kind of keeps bouncing up like that. That's kind of bad news, because I want everything to be completely flat. Ideally, you would want that for a model airport, uh, a completely flat surface. So I actually came up with a method to combat that yesterday. As you can see, I kind of already got started on the work here. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is that because I have 10 of these boards, I'm going to be connecting like groups of them. I'll connect like groups of three or four with toothpicks. This is kind of, I don't know how I, I mean, it's it'll work. I, I think it's, I mean, it's worked kind of in the past, but I think it's kind of a, a decent method to combat this issue. So what I've done is that I put in toothpicks between the boards themselves and I kind of just slide, slid them together like that. So like this one actually, this one in the middle was kind of warping quite a bit. Um, it kind of still does but not as much because I have the, the toothpicks in there to kind of hold it down. This one kind of came up a bit, little bit. You can kind of see it there. We'll, we'll fix that later. Um, so I might add a couple more as you can see it's sliding off really easily which is not ideal. Uh, this one, these two are kind of held tightly together. So uh, my plan is to probably do th groups of three maybe. I'll, I'll probably do this one as well, attach these four together. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'll demonstrate it momentarily of how I do it, but that's kind of the thing I'm trying to get through first is trying to combat this warping right here. It's kind of annoying. Um, I did buy the boards like that. I had no other option. I didn't want to wait for a restock to come in. So this is kind of what we have to deal with. So let's get that going first. I'll show you how we put the toothpicks in and get everything jumbled up together. So uh, let's do that. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is that you can see this board right here. Um, we got the toothpicks here. I will try to now, I'm going to try to put about three of these um, along the side here so that I can attach these two together. So I don't know if you can see the line here. This is one board. This is another board. Um, so there's a group of three right here that I've jumbled up or joined together. Uh, it's not really effective. This whole toothpick method. It's it doesn't. It's not meant to. I guess it is in part meant to hold the boards together, but um, it's not super effective. It's it doesn't do a good job at holding them tightly. So I guess if you wanted, ideally, to you know, hold them tightly together. You could put super glue on them and then, you know, stick it in there. Um, this isn't meant to be a how-to video, by the way. I just want to make that clear. It's just meant to be, sort of meant to document the process of how I kind of improve my model airport, kind of show you how I, how I did it. Um, but if you want to apply some of these methods to your own airports, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. 
Um, just make sure you don't make the same mistakes that I do. I know I'm going to make a lot of mistakes in this process, but you're going to see that um, throughout the course of the video. So uh, before I join the boards together, it's important to make sure that they are lined up. You can't really see. Let's actually see if you can show this. So you have the end of, of this board, the end of this board. They should be lined up together um, so that it does. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. You have to have them lined up so that everything works out good. So we're going to put them. I'm going to try to make a make the, uh, how do you say, make the toothpicks evenly spaced. So I'll put one in like that. I don't even think it matters which side of the toothpick goes in, to be honest. So I'm just going to put one in right here, make sure it doesn't like curve upwards and poke through the board here. So put one in like that, about halfway. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then we'll put one right about the halfway point right here. Again, make sure we put it in a decent enough spot so that it doesn't just come straight through the board itself. Okay, that, that looks fairly good to me. And then I'll put another one up here. So that's how we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna just take this up here, the boards that I have, and I'll just join them up together. So I gotta make sure that these are even, they're level with each other, which they are. Um, it's a lot of eyeballing, which isn't necessarily the best advice that I should be giving anybody, but I mean, that's how I do a lot of this stuff, so uh, it, it sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. So let's, let's start putting them together, I guess. So, And the same thing for the, the, the boards that I'm going to be joining. I'm going to make sure that the toothpick itself doesn't go ripping through the surface here. Um, so there we go, it's going in there. And then I'll have to make sure everything is, this is probably the hardest part, making sure everything is, all these pieces are connected. So I'll push it in from the side here. And that should be good. And then there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so I mean, it's all right. Let's, uh, let me give you a better view of it in a second. So I mean, it's not particularly fantastic. Like I said, the toothpicks don't do a good job of, you know, rigidly holding them together. You can see it's easily, yeah, I can easily slide them out like that. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a method, you know, it's, it, it helps somewhat to hold everything together. Make it somewhat, you know, uniform, because I think, like I said earlier, the best thing, a really important thing about a model airport is that, you know, you should have a relatively flat surface so that, because that's how airports are, right? You know, the tarmac, the apron and everything. I said tarmac. Wow, the apron is flat, so you want to replicate that on your model airport. Um, again, it's, uh, in my case, it also just kind of depends on the type of poster board that you buy, the type of foam board that you buy. Because um, a lot of them in the stores, I don't know why, they all, you just buy them and they're already warped some sort of way. Like this one, I tried, I, I tried bending it as well, which somewhat worked. I mean, this this one was pretty bad. It was like that, and so I tried bending it to make the the, the warping go away, and it left that big crease. That's the the one thing they should be aware of whenever you get like a focus, whenever you get like a poster board or something. If you're trying to combat the the warping, um, bending it like that is always going to make a crease, which is not particularly a good thing, but stuff happens like that. So I mean, this was my relatively primitive method at combating the warping. Maybe I just need super glue. I don't know if super glue would work. That super glue would only hold it together more uh, tightly. I don't know if it would do a good job of combating the warping itself. And also super glue would kind of stain it a little bit. It kind of tends to bleed through. So there's a bunch of super glue stains everywhere. I don't want that at all. So yeah. Um, okay, I might have to redo this one because you can see the toothpick is kind of busting through there. So let's try to fix that, um, which I'll do at a later time. So my goal, like I said earlier, I'm sorry, this part is kind of dragging. It's pretty boring, but my goal is to have a bunch of groups of boards, you know, pinned together. So I'll have these four. And the idea behind this is that it actually would probably make it harder for me to, if I need to dismantle the airport anytime, it might be harder to dismantle that way. 
Um, but at the same time, I mean, you have these things. You can easily join them up together. So that kind of negates my entire issue there. Um, but yeah, my, my plan I'm trying to do is link all or somewhat groups of these together. So I'll have these four, maybe these three that I will join together. And then these three, or maybe these four and then these two. We'll see. So I will do that. And then finally, we'll get into some more exciting things, you know, getting the foils cut and all that good stuff. All right, everyone, so the next order of business is now we're actually gonna start getting the apron foils ready to be put down across uh, the entire mat. I get a lot of comments about where I got these foils printed off from. Uh, the site actually doesn't exist anymore where you can download them, so you have to go through a archive link that I'll pin in a comment or something in the description below, um, but that's where I get these uh, foils printed off from. Um, so all the foam boards are kind of attached together now in their respective groups. I kind of I kind of forgot about the groups thing. I kind of just left that out. So they're all kind of, the entire thing is basically attached together now, which um, doesn't really matter, honestly. I mean, if I do have to dismantle the airport at any given time, I mean, it's I can easily just take off one board at a time. It doesn't really make a difference. I just put the toothpicks in between just to hold them all together uh, to reduce the warping. And as you can see, it kind of worked a good bit right here not not too much but it's a lot less warpy than it was before and then what I was doing I forgot to mention this what I was doing before to kind of combat the warping is a temporary solution uh, which worked for certain boards it didn't work for particular ones like this one or that one was that I was using weights that's why this one 200 scale model is here you're probably wondering why is this here um, but because these are yeah, as you can see you might be able to notice it does the board does kind of lift up when you pick it up and then it does get a bit more depressed when you put it down. So I was using some I1200 scale models as weights as in addition to some wood. I was trying to keep them, keep them down to kind of make sure that they would get rid of the warping. Didn't really work. So um, that's kind of why this is still here, although I don't really need that here still. Um, so the next order of business, like I said, getting the foils glued down and trimmed up. So at O'Hare Terminal 5, there is no roadway right here between the the stand and the the terminal building and literally just by pure miracle Google Maps has updated the Terminal 5 um, imagery with the proper updated expansion and everything because 2024 just started so they have the updated imagery everything is here all the updated gates the entire expansion is finally here too Finally, dude, this is like literally perfect timing. Um, right as I'm doing this whole overhaul for the replica, I can use this now to to do it. So now I have a really great reference, and this is what I would recommend whenever you're um, trying to do a model airport. You know, try to reference it on Google Maps, unless it's like a new sort of airport development, like a terminal. Um, it might take some time for it to fully show up on Google Maps. At least for here, the expansion has been open for almost a year now and at least this new part has been open for well, this isn't the expansion but this renovated part of Terminal 5 for Delta has been open for yeah a little over a year now and it only just now you know updated on Google Maps so it takes a while but um, I mean that's it just it depends on whatever airport you're doing so for me I mean it took a while it took some guesswork for all the previous the past year I've been doing this model airport took some guesswork where all the parkings were um, but now I actually have a reference. So as you can see, there is a roadway behind certain stands. And then from M6 onwards, it's literally right behind the stand itself. So for those specific um, stands, I'm cutting off the uh, service road back here. So it would just be the stand itself glued down and then from M6 onwards, I'll keep this glued on, but we're still gonna have to cut that one off for all of them. So, uh, the easiest way that I know how to cut whichever one and you know which which gate is which is that I actually wrote down the gate numbers. This is a uh, this M7, this M8, and then I wrote it down on each of my each of the foils here that are gonna go all the way across there. So you can see I'm 16, yeah, 16, that one's 15, 14, and then uh, for the other ones that are like a bit more complex, I wrote them on the back. So there's M40, this one would be 39, I believe, 38, sorry, 39 is 
this one. Uh, so yeah, that's just how I've been approaching it. And when I do cut these, I don't know if I'll do a live demo of when I cut them. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm not going to cut them directly on the board. That's a no-go. That's about to fall off. But um, I'm going to obviously put the foil on a cutting bolt, uh, you know, piece of wood. Uh, I forgot what they call these. They call this at least a cutting block, so I guess that's what they call this too. It's a bit thinner of a cutting block. So I'm going to do it, I'm going to just put it on the block like this. I have my ruler to lay it against the straight lines, and I'll just take my X-Acto knife and then just cut it off. I find this to be a much more effective technique than, um, you know, using scissors. It takes a lot more, uh, scissors takes a lot more time from what I've come to realize. This one I can just take one swipe and it's all cut off, which makes it uh, a bit more easy for me and more more time effective, honestly. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with uh, M2 through M10. We're going to get the delta side done. And uh, I don't, I'll, I won't do a live demo this time because I, I can't explain how I do it. Uh, so let's do it. Let's get started and I'll show you how that looks like once we're finished. Okay, everybody, so I kind of got a bit ahead of myself here. Went ahead and trimmed down all of the foils that I'm going to be gluing down eventually um, at, at this new Terminal 5 replica. Should have mentioned earlier, um, if you are doing this sort of step of trimming down the foils before you glue them, obviously don't glue them before you have the terminal configuration, the building, planned out. Like, if you know where the buildings are going to exactly go, at that point, yeah, why not glue it down? But right now, I mean, um, the exact angle of the terminal is kind of set now, so I, I think I should be good to glue everything. Um, but just, again, I mean, I should also mention, it's not meant to be a how-to how video once again, but just a good rule of thumb is to always confirm that, you know, you have the terminals and everything set before you start gluing it down, because once you glue it down and then you find out that the, ter the terminal buildings are like a bit off the angle-wise, then it's going to be kind of a pain to rip it up and then glue it back down again, fix everything. So, um, as of right now, I think this is the angle that's correct. I referred back to the Google, Google Maps and stuff. So we'll probably start gluing eventually, well, soon after this. I also wanted to mention that, uh, sorry, go over here. A bunch of these gates have um, extra, you know, lines because some of these are actually wide body compatible gates, which I didn't realize until I looked at the Google Maps, like M11 right here, this is a wide body uh, parking, and then M2 and M3 have other, you know, stands as well, so that was worth mentioning. To get those, the extra stands, like for those two gates, I just took some extra foils and just trimmed them down, so I'll put them over there eventually. Um, still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these, the actual, like, apron foils that I have, because now that it's gray, I don't really need these. Um, but I'll figure it out eventually, <laughs> what, I, what I have to do with them. Uh, it has been, has been kind of a challenge right here, um, because let me actually show you. These are M16 and M17. Uh, hold on, can I, okay, I can't, I was gonna try to flip it, but I can't one-handed because I have to hit the command key. Yeah, I can't do that, okay. Um, but what I was trying to show is that, as you can see, M17 has a roadway going all the way down through past M16, then it curves around at the end of the the, termi the, you know, the terminal ramp. Here it's kind of hard to do that. I think it's mainly because my terminal, this part is a bit not accurate when I made it last year. But, you know, we'll figure it out. I think I'm just going to have to make something unrealistic and make another roadway going this way and stuff like that. But it is what it is. So... Yeah, that's really it. I just have to glue this stuff down, figure it all out, and then put the gates up, and then we'll be good for this part. Um, long term, I mean, eventually the next step after that would be to get the uh, all the taxiway lines and, and stuff drawn out. That one, you know, eventually we'll get to. But uh, let's get this stuff glued down, because the terminal is ready to go. It's in the right spot, um, everything. So, yeah, we should be ready to go, and uh, I'll check back once I've completed it. All right, everybody, so it is the next day. Um, I actually got, again, a bit ahead of myself, glued down basically everything from M2 all the way down to uh, M34 right here. Um, so as you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, I still have this last side to do M35 through M40. So 
yeah, we still got this part to do. What I'm going to do is that, as you can see, there is a pretty big gap between this building and then the foils. So what I'm going to do is that I'm planning to just trim up some of these apron uh, foils that I have and then put them there so it's not just solid gray, so that at least there is something there. Uh, and that's going to go all the way down this way. Um, one thing I wanted to show you that I forgot again because I've kind of been rushing this video to be honest um, Just so I can get it done before the weekend because I have I'm gonna be out away from home for the next week before the school uh, semester resumes um, What I did before I started the whole overhaul was that I took pictures of every single um, You know part of the terminal how the gates were, how the foils were, so that I knew how to reset them up once the once I finished the the overhaul, I guess. So you can see it's not really going to help me that much anymore because you know I have these foils now that I'm going to be using. Um, it 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 kind of helps now that I have this. So to be honest, I don't even need that. It was a good backup plan to have this though because I I wasn't sure if the Google Maps was even updated. So that, that's just wanted to show you guys that. Um, let's actually show you some the progress the lights aren't on right now I apologize but as you can see uh, this part was the hardest by far M 14 15 and 16 yeah it was just terrible because uh, I had to redo this one like twice because I got the angle wrong and just fitting these three wide body gates in at this spot was just yeah terrible and then still this roadway is kind of messed up so I have to do this I have to make it go this way this way and then back up that way um, and then in these little parts here We'll put some more of these little apron foils at the end, and then that should be it. Then some more roads, because uh, there's a roadway right about here, so we'll have to connect this somehow. Um, that's going to be hard. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And then once I'm done gluing this and then finishing up the roads, because i got to finish the road that way too, um, then we're going to start doing the taxiway lines which is all that, oh you can't see it, but like all of this uh, this, the movement area, boundary yeah that's gonna be quite a hefty project but let's uh, finish this up first and then I will check back once I'm done alright everybody checking back in with another update I can't remember how long it's been since the last time I did a, an update for the uh, the progress right now but I have made a considerable amount of progress as you can see finished Basically the entire, um, all the parkings, or, or stands I guess, the gates, they're all done. Um, foils wise, they're all done as you can see. Uh, I have started uh, putting down the gate numbers because uh, on the ramp actually, they have, you know, each gate's number is like that. So I will have to hand paint, well not paint, I, I'm using paint pens. So I'm going to have to hand draw this for each of the um gates which is going to be a pain there's even more because some of these gates are flex gates which means that there is more than one configuration so like this one or actually no m39 for example has this wide body stand and uh, and then it has a narrow body gate or configuration that comes this way so there's a separate marker for that one right over here and i forgot m38 as well i got to put that one and then m36 right here and then of course the rest of them going down that way so yeah let me give you a brief uh tour of it real quick so i got all the roads as you can see coming down um i basically i'm almost out of well i'm not almost out but these bigger road foils i'm all out pretty much the only ones that i have left are the ones that go on the top here and they're considerably thinner so there is a lot there are a lot more roads to be added so like right here and then i think there's one where's m25 so right around he, yeah right there as you can see where m25 is like literally right here coming down another roadway and then right around where m17 is there's another one here and then right back there there's some more i gotta finish so i don't know maybe these will do the job we'll have to it's basically all i have so i have to use these at this point um got some more apron i have a lot more of these back there but sorry that's my phone going off messages and stuff like that sorry we just lost to Purdue Illinois so my friends are just talking about it we lost by like three or four points it was a t close game at the end anyway um, so this I'm gonna put right here just to cover that up it's giving me some it's messing with my OCD so I'm gonna just cut a little bit put that there um, otherwise I got to finish those roads down there and then 
other than the roads, like that's the main thing that I have left. I mean, aside from the roads, the main thing that I have to do are the um, taxiway lines. And then you see the movement area boundary, the, the dotted lines, that, and then just the, the taxiway lines. So it doesn't seem that bad. Um, actually seems pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, only hard part is to get the dimensions right. Um, so what I did to figure that out is that I basically literally just, I took my ruler and measured out how wide this 777-300ER is. And then I used that measurement to kind of like pinpoint like how wide the taxiway should be, where the exact marking should go. So I did the same with my British Airways or any random triple three I had. So I just took this one and kind of measured out based on what I did with, with this kind of quick measurement. Took the same concept and applied it to the actual mat. So I have the movement area kind of dotted there and then the actual taxiway here, which might be a bit too close because that means the plane is taxiing like that. Um, but if you kind of look at it, like, you know, the wing is going to be like right, the engine is going to be right there. So I have little, maybe, actually, I don't even know. Let's, this is the hardest part. Like, okay, maybe it might be, let's see this again. So if you look at the engines, we'll say, okay, let's do centimeters. Okay, it's about one, one centimeter. And then I can't even tell, it's so bad. Okay, so yeah, it's like from here to here is one centimeter on the screen. So that means the distance between the two engines on the triple three is from the movement area to the to the meat to the that whatever boundary that is before the grass. So that kind of helps. So I was actually somewhat accurate. So there's the line, and maybe if I move it a little bit more this way, then it's a bit more accurate. So that is going to be a challenge. Um, but otherwise, you know, you have that distance between the, you know, what do you say, the plane and then the actual roadway and then also the stand. Would it be a bit of a problem though if you have an A380 because then the engine is right here too. So I don't really know. Based on this, I mean the 777 is, that's the best measurement that I have. So I might just have to go off of that. So I, all I have to do really is just Oh, and there's more roads that way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look, there's more roads going that way. Shoot. Okay, I have to finish that then. Uh, okay, I don't know how much time I have to do all that, but yeah. So we got to finish drawing all this. I have my ruler. I have the paint pen. We have to finish the gate markings. And I didn't even, I just realized I don't have the foils for that. Is it, by foils, I mean these flex gates where they have a bunch of different things. Yeah, I did not put those down, so that's maybe a lot. I don't know, but there's a lot of stuff I gotta do. A lot of detailed stuff. Um, so, I think what I'm just gonna do is try to just draw out the taxiway lines first. I mean, the roads I could care less about at this point. Um, I just wanna see what I can do with the taxiway lines, see what I can do and how much I can do drawing-wise. So, we'll see what happens. I don't know when I'll finish it. I don't know when I'll check back for the next update in this video, but... I will see you then. All right, everybody. So it is actually about 30 minutes later, and uh, this is as much as I was able to get done. Uh, we got basically the main taxiway, uh, all the, the, the guidance lines at least, all drawn out. As you can see, moving all the way down. Um, as expected, I did mess up a little bit. I had to, I mean, the unrealistic part, as you know, like I said earlier, is that these are actually supposed to be all one line. M17 all the way down to M33 is basically all, they're all parallel, like in the, they're all in the same line. Sorry, I can't talk right now. But my replica, like this part is a bit inaccurate, so I had to put M18 and M17 a bit down this way. Uh, so in real life, this taxiway actually goes straight all the way down, but because of this inaccuracy, all this is actually a straight line, so M16 as well. Um, because of my inaccuracy, I had to make the taxiway a bit more slanted so that messed things up a little bit and then here this is actually supposed to be more here by m17 i totally missed that and i put it by m18 on accident so oh well um 
obviously now we just have to add the medians and the, the, the grass or whatever and then of course the more markings and stuff um, but the actual lines we have those done now and this 78710 I don't know what happened to it oh wait okay thankfully it's not broken I don't know what happened there sorry that you had to see that oh that's messed up anyway um other progress I added most of the number things for all the gates not all of them I'm still missing m2 through 4 down there cuz I got to finish the roadway first um but otherwise all the other ones the color is there I still have to add the number for some of them so I have m18 done 16 done 19 again like you saw and then everything else I still have to do um, I got some done here like 34 was the first one that I did and then uh, 39 all these so um, yeah so this part it was a bit complex as well because I didn't even realize that there's this much this many markings but there we go that one is basically done and this is I think the movement area boundary it kinda looks like all the same thing but I have to probably add some black outline to the movement area the dotted lines so that you can distinguish it this one is actually a remote stand uh, guidance line I think stand 102 it branches off this way and goes out that way um, because there are like four remote stands over here so we'll figure that out later so I'm done for today I'll probably pick this up tomorrow or the next day when well from when I'm filming this the next day uh, for you it'll be a matter of seconds but um, yeah, that's it for the work today. I think it looks pretty good so far. I did better than I thought it would, thankfully, so looking good so far. All right, I'll pick up tomorrow. We'll see how this goes on. All right, wow. So this is the next day. It's uh, probably going to be the last update that I gave in this video because after this I'm just going to end it off because I think this is enough progress to be documented in this video. Um, I think I've pretty much completed the bulk of the work as you can see we got the grass done and everything um, so I don't think I talked much about how, how I was gonna do the grass and everything but let's quickly go over that so unfortunately my computer just died um, I had Google Maps I was using it for a while so that literally just ran out of battery so I can't show you what I was referring to but um, to do the grass I basically I had a bunch of construction paper thankfully over the years I've just had a bunch of construction paper for all the various projects I've done just sitting around so I was able to get a bunch of green sheets out and use it for the grass um, again the diorama is not completely done yet because I still have to do this entire part fill it with the, put the green construction paper there and all the other markings but otherwise and then also the uh, hold short things markings that go in the middle here I have to finish those as well um, but yeah this is just I basically just eyeballed it really that's all I can really can really say about that um, just kind of measured like a triple seven uh, 300 where is it my British Airways one oh that one yeah so I use that as a reference point to make sure the engines weren't like going right on top of the grass make sure they're like they have a decent amount of clearance so yeah and then to cut it out I just used my box box cutter knife and then guided it with the ruler that's basically it there um, and so as you can see there was a bunch of different um, cuts of construction paper this was one big one and then this was this entire thing was another one and this was a separate one so you can kind of see the separation there uh, same case for here and then this is a smaller one and this one is also turned out a little bit better than I was expecting again it's not like this in real life but because of the inaccuracies I have with this middle part I had to just go with it um, more taxi uh, medians here and then that one back there is actually just concrete there's no grass there so that's why there's only gray foil I still have to finish the roads back there finishing adding those and then there's another roadway that comes down here another one there and then I think another one here and then one behind M25 that comes this way and then this roadway extends more that way so I gotta finish adding those but those are uh, just some minor things that you'll see at the first, well, not the first, but the air first airport update of this new setup, uh, for, not first airport update, but first airport update with the completed new setup, I should say, on my main channel, AS Aviation, which should be coming out in the next two to three weeks. I'm not entirely sure when, but of course, for it being the January update, it's going to come out sometime this month. So, yeah, and the last thing, I, I did also add a bunch of those little gate things. Um, I, show, I think I might have showed this earlier, but... Um, it was a different size last time, so I was able to change it out for a smaller one because 
this looks a bit more accurate because in real life these little things that come out of the building they're a bit thin like this so the, these look a bit more sl slightly more accurate now that one has a black roof I didn't have a gray roof to fit that so that's why that one's there and there actually is one more at the next gate which I didn't have enough Legos to, to build that one but it is what it is so yeah and then these are I think I didn't show these either the remote stands these four one two three yeah four um, added those as well with all the numbers probably won't be able to use them in the actual airport updates because it's not the full remote stand as you can see um, unless I put like a narrow body or a regional jet which is pretty possible I could put one there or there but these probably un unlikely I will be able to use those um, but yeah there's the the gate markers or whatever you call them uh, again the movement area boundaries I still have to add the actual black outline I don't know when I'll, I'll get to that because it's been kind of hard to use the permanent the black markers because some of them kind of dry up and then I have to wait for them to um, I don't know they dry up and then I have to fix them off figure out to not to make them not dry um, so yeah and I also did I ended up running out of glue sticks mid like putting the grass down so I thankfully I had one of these tape runners on hand which also ran out of tape halfway through so I had a thankfully I had a spare uh, roll of tape whatever you call it adhesive to reload it with and so that finished the job um, so yeah by the next uh, you won't see it in this update but in this video sorry but in the first in the upcoming video on my main channel you'll see the full completed product hopefully um, but this is enough updates for this video I guess so I want to thank you all so much for watching I know this video might have dragged on for quite a while um, but I hope you enjoyed it hope it was a decent kind of documentary I guess you could say of how documentary sorry I was gonna say documentation but documentary kind of makes more sense of how I took this project and made it a reality I guess um, I'm sure people would have been curious to know how I did it so I think this would have been a, a cool way to document everything again it wasn't meant to be a how-to video this was not at all meant to be a how-to video it was just meant to be a, a video detailing how I did uh, the process of making this so yeah that's it for today uh, for this video so thank you all so much for watching I have plans to make more uh, model aircraft reviews and unbo oh, uh, reviews, unboxings, all that stuff in the future with this channel, so stay tuned. Um, first impression unboxings will eventually come back as soon as I get more models, but it's been a while since I, I bought any, so yeah, but that's uh, just some stuff to look forward to. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everybody, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.